when it comes to investing advice, it seems that so-called experts position themselves in one of two different camps. The more predominant camp will confidently and truthfully proclaim that the American economy is as strong and robust as ever. Stock prices have never been higher, and the strength of the dollar defines it as the most secure currency on the globe. The nation's GDP is by and far the largest and most productive on the globe. This camp will tell you that they have been investing in the stock market for 10 years and have been yielding profits at record levels. They will tell you that investing in ETFs and derivatives has produced consistent and positive yields for the past decade and they have the numbers in their portfolios to prove it. They will accurately proclaim that the entire world seeks the U.S. dollar and acquires it as a safe haven for the stability of their own nation's currencies. They will state that if you seek a long-term safe, low-yield investment, the bond market is traditionally where you should park your wealth as it has consistently sheltered investors during troubled economic times in the past. They will state that if there's any financial crisis looming on the horizon, not to worry, because current fiscal policies will effectively handle it and economic normalcy will be restored in a very short period of time. And they will be able to cite numerous historical examples of exactly this happening. When poised with the question of the solvency of the current banking system, they will state that we have nothing to worry about because the banking system is too big to fail, and thus we are guaranteed their survival. After all, the entire nation's economy depends on it. If asked about the threat of foreign nations pulling away from the U.S. dollar, they will correctly say that the American military might is unrivaled and will always provide the enforcement of the nation's economic policies. They will accurately state that the U.S. dollar is the global reserve currency by which all other currencies are measured. They will state that all OPEC oil purchased around the world must be purchased in U.S. dollars, thus keeping the demand for the American currency as strong as ever. They will tell you that property values are ever increasing and income producing properties are a stable, tangible asset class for investment. If you ask them if they have any concerns about a bail-in, they will tell you that a bail-in would never be allowed to happen. They will tell you that regardless of the economic hard times, there will always be food in the grocery store, gas at the gas pumps, hospitals available for the sick and injured, and law enforcement to protect you and your constitutional rights. This is America, and we always find a way. They will state that even during the 2008 crisis that the average citizen was barely affected. They will ask you, who do you know who lost their job or had their home repossessed during this crisis? Every bit of these claims and statements are factually accurate. The problem with this camp of financial investment advisors is their inability to accept even the possibility that the current American global economic dominance at some point has to come to an end. It cannot be sustained indefinitely, and this is not what people want to hear. For three generations, America has been a domineering and prosperous nation. Today, young adults, their parents, and even their grandparents have only known success and prosperity. There are so few American family members still with us today that could remind us of what it was like during the Great Depression. You won't find in educational curriculums anything more than a paragraph or footnote referencing some of the toughest economic times Americans have ever had to face prior to the Bretton Woods Agreement, which fundamentally launched America into its present position of global dominance. Most people would never believe for a second that America could ever revert to a time of such economic despair. I believe it is this inability to even conceive these possibilities that reveals the true Achilles heel of the American people. I'm not saying the worst possible case scenario is going to happen, but denying that it even could happen at all I feel is very dangerous. Yes, 
The past 60 years has been a good time to be an American, but that doesn't guarantee that it will last forever. History teaches us that no matter how great the empire, they all eventually run their course and have to step aside. They don't necessarily drop to the end of the line, but they are most certainly no longer holding the same power and influence that they once had. If you can accept this as an inevitability, then you can better understand the second camp of investment advisors. This is the camp that recognizes that regardless of the appearance of the current levels of prosperity, the time period of America's economic dominance has greatly exceeded those of empires before them. The American national debt is now over $23 trillion. The nation's gross domestic product, or GDP, isn't sufficient to cover the interest owned on the nation's debt, let alone paying down the $23 trillion of the debt's principal. This camp recognizes that global commerce is changing very rapidly, and many nations are finding ways to circumvent the American economic restrictions and controls. Many of these nations are joining with other global economic juggernauts like China and Russia to create independent international banking payment systems outside of the American controlled SWIFT system in order to move their currencies freely around the world without interference or threat of exclusion from the system. Collective nations such as those who have formed the BRICS have begun to offer petrol products to the world without having to use the US dollar. This erodes the leverage of the 45-year monopoly that America has held over the world's oil markets. Russia and China over the past few decades have accelerated their acquisition of gold reserves in order to establish an independent value for backing their own national currencies. This will only allow the value of their currency to be able to be depegged from the value of the US dollar. When the dollar begins to falter, the value of their national currencies will be able to stand on their own. Any nations who have not backed their national currencies with some kind of tangible asset class will find the value of their currency at the complete mercy of the value of the dollar. As we know, the dollar was removed from the gold standard in 1972. Currently, the US dollar is only backed by the faith and confidence the world has in the American government. If that faith, for whatever reason, were to begin to waver internationally, it would surely cause a domino effect that could never be recovered from. Once the world no longer believes the US dollar is strong, or there is something else out there stronger, the world will quickly abandon the dollar and select something else as the new world reserve currency. When this happens, it will change everything. No longer will the world need to sell their products, goods, and services to America in order to obtain the US dollar. They won't even want the dollar anymore because it won't hold any international value. All the world banks who are required to maintain a certain percentage of the world's reserve currency in order to be able to print their own national currencies will send all those dollars back to America, substantially increasing the domestic money supply, thus creating a potential hyperinflationary environment further driving down the value of the US dollar. Think of the economic consequence if the world stopped importing their foreign goods to America. The US is currently the largest consumer of global goods. If the dollar ceases to have value and is no longer desired by the producers of these goods, then they will stop being imported to America. It doesn't make any sense for them to send products to a country that doesn't have any value to pay for it they will have to find new customers who can pay for them. Think about everything you own that is not made in America. It's an eye-opener when you walk around your house and start looking at everything to see where it was made. Furniture, appliances, kitchenware, tools, decorations, clothing, even the food in your cupboards in your refrigerator. Have you ever taken a look at your firearms to see how many were made in a foreign country? 
Do you own a vehicle that you think was 100% made in America? If you think that your Chevy or Ford was all American made, then I encourage you to check your VIN number against the plant it was manufactured, or check the engine or transmission or any other components that were used to make your vehicle, and you will find that some part of almost every make of automobile has foreign made parts or was assembled in a foreign country. There are some exceptions, but they are very few. Now imagine all those products will no longer be found on the shelves of American stores. Today the world prefers the strong dollar over any other currency because it has more value than any other nation's currency. However, if that were to change and the dollar was no longer as valuable as the ruble or the yuan or euro, all the commerce that was flowing into America would now be rerouted to the countries with the currencies that do have the most value. The dollar has been so strong for so long that it's been hard to even believe that it could be anything but the strongest currency in the world. This inability to believe or accept this possibility is what keeps most mainstream financial investment advisors continuing to advise the status quo. If the dollar loses its status as the world reserve currency, the status quo of investment advice will no longer apply and could cost you your entire wealth. Believing in the likelihood or even the probability of this event occurring could put you in a position to not only retain your wealth, but even possibly prosper during such a radical economic event. If the dollar ceases to have value and foreign goods and services stop arriving to the American merchants and store shelves are bare, employees will no longer be required. Ask yourself if your job is related in any way to a foreign good or service. And if so, imagine it going away tomorrow. Then think how many jobs it would affect. Where would these people go for employment? How will they pay their bills? Even if you buy online, ask yourself how many of the products that you order on Amazon or wherever are foreign made. Here's a challenge for you. The next time you go shopping, make a list of things to buy and only purchase those products that are 100% American made and just see how much of your list actually gets purchased. A major loss in consumer sales means loss in stock price, leading to potential panic and mayhem in the stock markets, all of which continues to drive the American economy and dollar down deeper and deeper. With merchants unable to sell the same volume of products will result in reduced income and profits causing layoffs, store closures, and less employee income flowing back into the economy. Something as fundamental as the US dollar losing all its faith of value as the world reserve currency has enormous outreaching effects beyond what most people would ever conceive. Within only a matter of months, everything economically will begin to screech to a halt. Without the strength of the US dollar, what do you think the effects on the GDP will be? The bond markets will no longer be a viable option to shelter your wealth. If you currently have investments in the stock market and the value of stocks begins to crash, what will you do with your wealth? Where will you put it? What will you buy? When the banks begin to go insolvent because they didn't get the bailout that they got last time, what do you think they're going to do? A bail-in perhaps? You know the very first thing that they will do is lock down all accounts to prevent any runs on the bank. Everyone will be denied access to their accounts, safety deposit boxes, ATM machines, computer banking, auto bill paying, Everything will stop immediately to ensure the solvency of the banks. All your secured and unsecured assets are the property of the bank and the banks have every legal right to take possession of it and use it at their discretion. They can legally replace your deposited financial assets with stock shares in the bank. 
which now makes your deposited wealth no longer cash and therefore no longer covered by the FDIC insurance. That's all it takes for the bank to legally take everything you have. Once the banks have used up all their deposited assets to remain solvent, then they'll have to take a look at the only tangible assets that they have on their books, your real estate. Normally, banks would only be interested in getting your mortgage payment every month, but they will now be looking for anyone in default on their loan so that they can repossess their collateral. Once they have your property, then they will sell it for probably pennies on the dollar to a foreign buyer that will have some kind of accepted value to their currencies. It's all about the bank's survival and will have no consideration for the families they will displace. If your home is paid for and you become default on your property taxes, the government will be stepping in and doing the same thing. They will do whatever they have to in order to keep the government solvent. If that means taking your home and putting you on the street, that is exactly what will happen. Being in a financial position to be able to always make your mortgage and or tax payments should be a critical strategic component of your investment plan. During the previous economic crisis in 2008, the Fed had tools such as the ability to lower interest rates and or the ability to inject massive amounts of currency to stimulate the economy. Today, there is very little room left for lowering the interest rate and quantitative easing or printing more money won't work because the printed money won't have the same value and thus will have less influence over the economy's recovery. In the past, it was the timely reaction of the Fed and the government together which provided the opportunity for a quick economic recovery. But this won't be possible to even a fraction of the same degree when it happens under these current conditions. Without the ability to freely print money, it won't take long for the top-end weapon systems and equipment to fall into disrepair. As expensive as these high-tech military weapons and systems are, they can be equally as expensive to maintain. Without the ability to maintain them, this very expensive equipment will become very useless a lot sooner than most people would think. With a diminishing threat of a military retribution, more world nations will become emblazoned to defy American policies and tariffs. One of the great examples of how America has used their military might to influence international trade was with the petrodollar agreement with Saudi Arabia, which later expanded to all OPEC nations, where all OPEC oil only could be purchased with US dollars. In return, America agreed to provide a military presence, capabilities, and even direct security to the OPEC oil fields from any proposed threat to them. This agreement has secured the petrodollar since 1975, but is now coming into question as being required or worth the arrangement. These oil-rich Arab nations have the ability to back their own currencies with tangible assets to prevent having to go down with the US dollar, which they're realizing is an eventual inevitability. Without the US petrodollar agreement, America will no longer benefit from the world's purchase of OPEC oil. Oil is one of the world's largest energy consumable resources. Millions of barrels are sold every year to countries all over the world and all of those countries had to sell something to America so that they could obtain those dollars to buy those barrels of oil. Once the US petrodollar is denounced, all of that forced generation of income will come to a complete stop. Once you are able to accept the fact that the dollar can be replaced as the world reserve currency and can lose its status as the petrodollar, you will begin to see all the very obvious signs that they are both already about to happen. This is not an attempt to create a doomsday scare, 
but to serve as a warning that there are very good intentioned, intelligent, and educated individuals who continue to provide financial advice based on past performance without any consideration for the very strong probability of the dollar being no longer the world's reserve currency or continuing to enjoy the privilege as the OPEC petrodollar. I feel that failing to factor these potential major economic events into a financial plan is irresponsible. It is ultimately up to the individual to decide how they wish to allocate their wealth into an investment plan. But without all the necessary information available, how can an investor truly make an informed decision? I feel there is an ethical responsibility that all possibilities should be considered and reasonable effort taken to research those possibilities before deciding to completely omit them as a factor for financial investment consideration. If there is even the slightest possibility of such events, it should be at least offered as a factor to consider. I don't believe that the omission of these probabilities is being ignored out of malice or negligence, but rather of an honest arrogance in the belief that it just can't happen to America. We take out home insurance and car insurance, not because we believe a tornado will hit our home or we will wreck our car. We do it to cover the eventuality of the event occurring. However small the probability, it is still a probability that can have a devastating effect on our lives, so we take the appropriate measures to ensure we don't have to endure such a devastating loss. Without home insurance, you won't be able to rebuild your home. Without car insurance, you won't be able to replace your car. Without considering the possibility of a major negative economic event occurring to the US dollar, you won't be able to retain your wealth. Do you feel there is any probability of the dollar losing its status as the world reserve currency? Was this information beneficial to you? Let me know in the comment section below. A big thank you to all who support this channel, especially to those who take the time to like, comment, and share. I just wanted to let you know that it is greatly appreciated. If you enjoy talking about precious metals, investments, and finance, stop by the ST66 Discord. The link is in the show more section below. It's totally free and gives you a great place to go and ask questions and learn from other community members. Just select the channel with the topic you're interested in and you're all set. There's a channel where you can buy, sell, and trade, receive announcements on upcoming ST66 events, read posts, watch videos, listen to music, receive recommendations for good books to read. Just about anything can be found at the ST66 Discord, so stop by and check it out. If you enjoy this type of content and want to see more, you can subscribe to the channel by hitting the subscribe button. Then, if you select the notification bell, you will receive a notification whenever I post up new content, so you'll never miss a thing. And as always, feel free to share this content with all.